Patrick would never say the word love. So when he volunteers to read the poem for class that day, he does so only on the condition that he doesn't have to say that word. So he reads, and when he gets to that word, he pauses, looks at me, and waits for me to say it, love, before continuing. Sounds a little something like this. The saddest thing in the world has got to be when you love someone unable to provide the love and support you need. And actually do do it like this dramatically, perhaps to make my students laugh as I fill in the gaps you see Patrick. He's one of the most talented students I've ever had. He scores his pain beautifully on the page like he's constructing arias for operas with poetry. Patrick makes sense of things, his remembering like his mother's drunk driving, her suicide attempts going off a cliff with him at her side. After all, what kind of mother would want to leave her child behind? In another piece, Patrick calls himself a bird without wings. After class, apologizes for always writing such sad things. But he can't help it, he says. The teacher in me tries to create reinforcing messages, like sometimes it's the sad things we need to write in order to release, let go, break down, and cry. I tell him, maybe try to incorporate music. I know it lifts me. His response, uh, Miss, Miss Tanay, I don't think I can sing. I say, baby, it doesn't matter whether you're on or off key. It's about honoring and using your voice his song of choice. I believe I can fly. The next day, Patrick drifts between verses. I used to think that I could not go on. And life was nothing but an awful song. And he hits every note to the back of his throat. I can hear past anger turn into harmonious hope. And though he still won't speak it, Patrick sings it. Later, he'll tell me there's a difference. But now I know the meaning of true love. Performing his piece inspires the quiet. This other girl who sits in the back of class raises her hand says she also believes she's a flightless bird, but maybe she too can learn to rise with music. So she asks if she can share. No longer scared, she begins. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. Her voice leaps off the page. Her cantatas are raged, written in jagged lines to release memories going up in a household where her mother's boyfriends came into her room at night. And it was then, in the darkness, that she wanted to rise into flight. Where troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me. But they pulled off her wings. As a flower de-petaled, she goes on to tell us this continued from third grade until just last year. We are in tears when she's finished. She rips up her paper, places pieces on her tongue like sacrament, thinking if she swallows the words, this simple act might save her. So I sit beside her, put a piece in my mouth too. I want her, then the class, to know that you don't have to eat your rage, pain, and sadness alone. But they don't know that I need to eat these words too to feel full, that once I lost a friend who I loved, and when he killed himself, his body hung from rope like pendulum, marking the times I never said it enough. So today, I make sure I speak, teach, pray, and say, love, maybe even too much. I'll play love on repeat, my love, my love, my love, my love, when my students write pieces weighted in grief. So when the flightless sing, birds fly over the rainbow, why? Then oh, why can't we share in the experience? The class joins in, puts pieces in their mouths too. Together we can dissolve the heaviest words to turn notes into chords to create a common chorus. I believe I can fly if I just spread my wings together. Together, we can all fill in the gaps for those who need help, not just saying, but believing in words like love. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. She's always gone too long. Anytime she's taken away. When angels speak of love, I'm pretty sure they didn't mean drunken hockey fans spraying 57 native children with beer, taunting, mouthing racial slurs and phrases like, go back to the reservation. If love is all coming and going, this is coloniality starting back at its beginning with children so young they are still learning the meaning of words like love and hate. 
And you gotta hate the way the world works when some words scar your ears so deeply that the voice that said them still echoes in your head, still echoes in your head, still echoes in your head. If love is action and we cannot tell where one echo ends and another begins, let's think of it like this. Life begins with a woman giving birth. Because of this, she is sacred. Yet our women are being taken. 1,181 reported missing and murdered in Canada alone, and the numbers here in the U.S. are still unknown. Wonder this time where she's gone. Wonder if she's gone to stay. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. This house just ain't no home anytime. She's taken away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone underreported, not reported, but we do have some statistics. Nearly half of all Native American women have been raped, stalked by an intimate partner, or beaten. When angels speak of love, I'm certain they didn't mean this. Our women and children are being traumatized. One in three Native women will be raped in her lifetime and are 2.5 times more likely to experience sexual assault crimes compared to all other races. When does this race to feel safe and survive end when you're missing in life and missing in death? Where do we begin? Nowadays, when angels try to speak of love, my ears strain to hear anything over the national news and media that barely, if ever, mention us. And I wonder if the silence is how we eventually disappear. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> so um, here's this last one I'm going to do. I used to want to call it um, If I Could Turn Back Time, so I could like make a funny, like, if I could turn, because you know I like to sing. Um, but I performed it for this, these middle schoolers on the Red Lake Reservation a, f a few years ago, and they had no idea who Cher was. So um, I felt really old, and I just performed it, and I said, okay, well, you guys tell me what you want me to call it. And they said I should call it Back to the Beginning. <clears throat> Sometimes I wish we could start back at the beginning, turn our existence into a videotape, call it life. Then push life into a VCR, press play and pause and get the chance to rewind with their image still on screen, watching everything that ever meant anything reverse with the push of a finger. If we could press rewind. Mothers or fathers who abandon their sons or daughters wouldn't walk away, but return, run backwards, turning towards their children so they would never have to look into eyes that ever saw them as unworthy of keeping. History wouldn't repeat, but instead fold into itself like disease-ridden blankets, rolling themselves back up like yo-yos, returning to the hands that ever made those hateful gestures in the first place. Battles wouldn't end in bloodshed, but instead a ride off into a sun rising with warriors always returning from war, or boarding school with their hair flowing behind them in lengths of rivers. Rewinding would mean going back to school to unlearn all the lessons ever taught to us. We'd start books at their ending, unstring sentences into letters until all we were left with was sound, waiting to come out of our mouths. Like my friend Angel, his would open to fountain gallons of vodka from liver. His throat would spill it back into bottle after bottle after bottle that he'd set back onto the shelves of a liquor store. He'd walk out of in a line so straight. It'd lead him to the day Angel's father cut off his wings when he left him fatherless, falling asleep on a bench, rewinding he'd unfreeze to death as warmth re-entered his body, convulsing not in dry heaving, but reheating, detoxing into calm as snowflakes would slowly rise back up to the sky. Imagine the kind of miracle time travel like needles sucking poisonous drugs from addicted veins, pills and dissolving into wholeness, being pushed back into containers, fitting just right. Everything would be all right. And for our youth who contemplated taking their own lives or committed suicide would feel blood flow back into open because their veins pulsing with life that knows it's worth saving so much that determined hands repeatedly pull away razors from wrists, leaving behind no scar, no trace, not even the memory. And any fist that hit someone in rage or abuse would loosen into outstretched arms to call you home instead of the bullet-shaped holes making their way back into the guns or mouths that shot them in the first place. If we could rewind, maybe I could remember if I ever said anything to hurt Angel. If we could rewind, my Angel would be able to fly backwards, lift himself back up, and life would be breathed back into him as he unwrapped the rope from his neck to inhale sweet and ever-expanding air into his chest. If we could rewind, I could tell Angel over and over, I loved you, I loved you, and it would always, always start 
with you. Thank you. <laughs>